Hey, this is Jonathan from the Pi Calendar team, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up front end event submission using Pi Calendar and a form plugin like Gravity Forms. So, what I have is a local site setup with a working front end form. So, I'm gonna walk you through that and give you the need to know information. So, you can either do this in Gravity Forms or your form plugin of choice, could be anything like Fluent Forms or WS Forms, anything that has front end post submission and allows you to add custom field data will work perfectly fine. So in our case, we're using Gravity Forms and the advanced post creation add-on, which will enable us to use our form to create posts on the front end. So let's go ahead and take a look at the demo I have here on the front end. This is very simple. So first of all, what we're going to do is give our event a name. We're gonna call this one lightsaber practice. And then our start date is the date picker inside of Gravity Forms so we can pick whatever date we want, like the 19th. And the start time here is a text field with an input mask to properly format our time. The reason why is Gravity Forms time field doesn't have seconds and our date field does require seconds. And this is in a 24 hour format. So if we wanted one o'clock, we need to enter 1300 hours like that. Then in the case of Gravity Forms as well, we are also required to add an end date and end time, which actually is not required in PyCalendar. In the admin interface in the back end, you can just set a start date and start time. But in the case of Gravity Forms, because of the way that it works, if you include the end date and it's blank, it actually doesn't save that to the database, which means that your post then has an invalid end date and the event won't show up in PyCalendar. So a small catch for this is that your end date does need to be set. So for our end date here, we're gonna go ahead and just choose something like the 21st because we can create an event here that spans multiple days. And then for our end time, let's go something like nine o'clock in the morning like that. And then the other option we have is the ability to let somebody choose whether this is an all day event or not. Now all day events essentially just mean that there is no time component to it. So it's kind of like in Google Calendar, if you tick the little box that says all day, then the time goes away and it just takes up the entire space of the day. So what we're going to do in this case is select no. And then when I hit submit, the page is going to refresh and we'll see the event of lightsaber practice appear on our calendar. So I hit submit and look at that. So there is lightsaber practice and it has our start date and time as well as our end date and time. Now what's great about this is if we go view this post and we want to edit it in the back end, then we can see that because we updated those meta fields directly, all of our controls in the back end are already set. So our start date fills in the proper time and date as well as our end date and show on calendar is enabled here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual form inside of Gravity Forms. So what I've done here is just added a simple text field and this is the event name that we entered, which was lightsaber practice. Now, technically Gravity Forms does require you to have an additional field for your post content. Um, in my case, I just used some demo data, but you could just add an additional field for the post content. Then next up, you can see here, I have two different fields. One is a start date field. This is just the Gravity Forms field type of date. And then what I've done is down here in the date format, you can see there's a ton of different options, but what you need to do is select the one that's year, month, date with the hyphens in between them because that is part of how our date is required to be formatted. Then, like I said, for the start time, I just used a simple single line text field because Gravity Forms doesn't have seconds in their built-in time field. Then what I did was in the general tab, I have an input mask. And the way that this input mask is formatted is this little help icon, you can see you use the number nine to indicate numbers. And then I just added colons between them so that it forces the numbers to kind of fit in the proper order. And that's how on the front end, you can see how I was only able to input numbers and not input any letters. So this helps guide your users a little bit more. Obviously they can still make mistakes for times that don't exist. And you could set the events to draft instead of publish so that you have the opportunity to audit them. Then what I've done is just repeat the exact same thing. In fact, all I did was just clone these fields and just rename them. These follow the exact same format. Then with the is all day, this is a radio option. And what I did for the choices here is click edit choices. And I went ahead and chose the option of show values. Now, the reason why I did that is because when we choose the option of no, what's actually saved to the database is a value of zero. And if we choose yes, then a value of one is saved. So we need to do that because otherwise, if we save the values of no and yes to the database, the all day event option doesn't save the proper format and the event won't show up on the front end. So once you have all of your fields, then what we can do is go to our post creation feed. And I have one here so that you can see it. And what you can do is go ahead and give your feed a name. I called this PyCal event. And then if we scroll down a little bit to the post settings, 
you can see quite a few options here. So if you have different post types on your site, if you want this to be a custom post type of event, maybe you can go ahead and choose that. I'm just using the default WordPress post type of post. And then of course, like I said, you could change these to draft. So you have the opportunity to review this before you publish it, or like I have done in the example earlier, it just automatically publishes. And so it shows up on the front end. Then for the date, this is the entry date and will be attached to the actual post date as opposed to anything to do with Pi Calendar. So we'll go ahead and leave that as entry date. Feel free to modify any of those other sections to suit you. And what we actually wanna do now is scroll down to the post content. So you'll recall I said that the event name field is simply just the post title, which is exactly what's happening here. So I use the gravity forms merge data here to pull in the event name. And of course we would wanna set those fields to required for real and not optional so that people don't forget things. Then of course, like I said, you're also going to need post content. In my case, I'm just using some sample data here, but you could have an additional field for content and have that filled in automatically. Next up, we have the custom fields, and this is really where the magic happens. So you can find a link to all of our available custom fields in the description, but these four are the ones that are required to actually get your post to submit on the front end. These are all you're going to need if you're using the free version of Pi Calendar. There are more that work with the pro version, such as recurrence and colors. Now, the most important one here is PyCal is event. And this value is one because what we want to have happen is when this post is submitted, this toggle right here is turned on. So of course our event shows on the calendar. So us setting a value of one in the post creation feed actually switches that toggle on. The next thing we're gonna do is the PyCal start date field. And this is pulling in the merge tag from Gravity Forms, the dynamic data of the start date in our year, month, day format like we talked about. Then we're using the letter T, capital letter T, to combine that with our start time. And this is the format of the date and time that PyCalendar needs. So you need to follow this exact format. So consider what we've already discussed in the proper date format and the proper time format. Then you can use your dynamic data or merge tags to pull that information in. Then again, you're just gonna repeat the exact same process for the end date. And then also you have the PyCal is all day option. Now, one thing that I want to show you is when you pull in the merge tag for is all day, you can see that it says is all day and then the field ID of nine. Now, if you recall, we went ahead and set that to use the value of either zero or one. So all we need to do in gravity forms is append a colon and the value. So that way what's actually being saved is the value and not the yes or no option. With that, all you need to do is go ahead and save this post creation feed. And now what you're going to end up with on the front end is exactly what we saw, which is this form that then automatically adds posts to the front end. And just to review, let's go ahead and say this event name is going to be, I don't know, something like open track day. The start date is going to be Saturday the 28th at 8 a.m. And then sat, oh, Sunday the 28th, excuse me. And then the end time is 11 a.m is all day, we could go ahead and do yes on that one just to see something different. We'll submit this. And here we have our open track day post. Now, remember that when we use the all day, it of course ignores the time. So if we wanted to, we could go view this. And if we edit this, we can see that that option is working. Now, because I actually input a time on this post, it really doesn't make sense for me to use the all day option here, but you can see that it was toggled on automatically just simply based on our Gravity Forms radio field. So if I go ahead and update this, then let's take a look at the front end. Then our post is here with our times exactly as intended. So this is how you can create events on your calendar from a front end form using Gravity Forms. The approach to achieve this in something like WS Forms or Fluent Forms will be very similar. It will require some tweaking, but the general principle applies. The main thing is that we need to correlate your fields to the custom meta fields that we've defined for Pi Calendar. As I said, these four are the main meta fields that you need to have data tied to for the free version of Pi Calendar, and for Pro, there are more as well. You can find those at the link in the description or visit pycalendar.com for more information. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, let us know, and we'll look forward to seeing you in a future video.